This is Mission Qualphone, a monthly podcast that takes you inside the workings of our company, but not just the ins and outs of business. We look at the ideas and insights that make Qualphone truly unique. As a company, we are committed to being the best and making each person's life better. Join us as we get to know and learn from people from across the organization. What's their story? What have they learned? And how do they live out Qualphone's mission? Welcome to Mission Qualphone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Mission Qualphone. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Marisol. This is episode 32 today. Yes. Yes. And going with our theme of hashtag Qualphone Mission 360, we are getting a perspective of someone who's been with the company 20 years. Wow. Miss Katie Anderson. She onboarded me. Oh, so we, yeah. we have we have her to thank for you. Yeah. <laughs> thank, blame. <laughs> thank, blame. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way you want to go. It will be very interesting to hear from someone who's been here 20 years. That will be interesting. You know what I love about the interview is you will, you'll hear her say this, and you it's a theme we've heard several times with several of our guests. And it's, it's more about this industry, the BPO industry, which is so many of us, myself included, did not know what we wanted to be when we grew up. Hmm. Some of us are still still working on it. But we found not only a career, but for many of us, myself, a fantastic career within the BPO industry. You hear it here in the interview with Katie. And, and it makes me proud that we get to show this other side of this industry that sometimes isn't treated great. Well, yeah. I mean, I think people tend to talk about the turnover and those sorts of things, but there are, in fact, lots of people with, within our company, other companies in the BPO industry where people have built amazing careers within this industry. So yeah, I agree. This is a great story that we'll hear today. And I can totally relate to your point and Katie's point about not knowing what, what we want to do. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was really in my mid thirties until I, I decided this is what I want to do. And, and that being, you know, learning and development and leadership training, that sort of thing. I spent 15, 18 years before that doing all kinds of things, gaining all kinds of great experiences, but never really knowing what am I going to do when I grow up? So I can totally relate to that part of this conversation. I, I remember going off to college and and having absolutely no clue so the first thought was oh i was going to study to be a doctor because mm. i thought that was just this amazing career and it would bring pride to my family and, and that was my thinking till my first organic chemistry class <laughs> <laughs> walked right out yeah, i was like okay yeah. there was like a semester or two where i really just i suffered through this idea of like i, j I just didn't I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, if I, if I studied what I was really interested in, I didn't think that there would be a career right. uh, that would afford me the life that I wanted. And, and it all worked out. It's all great. Uh, I think it's just funny how that is such a, a common theme in people's lives that yeah. you do not know <laughs> what you want to be when you grow up. <laughs> So Marisol, with that, let's hop into our interview with our benefits generalist, Katie Anderson. Welcome, Katie. Katie, you are the perfect onboarding person during that experience. And I, I always hold a special place for you because of that, because you were very nice and gentle. <laughs> Joining Qualphone, it's a, a large company. So thank you, Katie. Welcome and welcome to the podcast. Oh, th thank you. And you're, you're welcome. I know that onboarding can be difficult and we were making a lot of changes during that time. And to be honest, you were one of our guinea pigs. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that it ended up being a good experience for you. What's funny is I've been in that role many times in my life. So <laughs> and congratulations. We're excited to have you on the podcast because you just celebrated your 20 year anniversary at Qualphone. Yeah, it's it's been a crazy um, experience and 
I've grown a lot and changed a lot during those 20 years, but I'm grateful to be here. I, I want to hear all about it because I, so I think I've mentioned this before in a previous podcast, up until the time I've worked for Qualphone, I was never loyal to a company. I've been loyal to a particular people, mentors, <laughs> myself, <laughs> but I was never, the companies I had worked for kind of were always in the prospects of wanting to be acquired or, or acquiring. So it was it, just company loyalty wasn't a thing that happened in my career until Qualphone. It's a, it's a completely new experience for me. It's like liking a, a team, a sports team, like you're really <laughs> invested in its success and its growth. And it's the only company I can envision saying, oh, I've been here five years, 10 years, 20 years. So I'm fascinated, Katie, 20 years. That's a, that's an adult child. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, it definitely is. And the crazy thing is, is when I started working here, it was just until I found something better. And I've never looked for something better. I started here and loved it from day one and have been here and, and never left. Well, Marisol, as you mentioned, lots of companies in this space have been involved with acquisitions, either uh, acquiring other companies or or being acquired. Katie and I actually were were in that role. We worked for a, a different organization that was acquired by Qualphone. So Katie has insight into being with the previous organization that, that became part of Qualphone. Katie, can you kind of share with us your journey? 20 years, a lot has happened over that 20 years. So just kind of give us a thumbnail sketch of, of what the past 20 years have been like and, and, and how you how you got here. Definitely. It's been quite a journey. Like I said, I started working here just until I found something better and I just loved it. And I, one of the things that I think I love the most is given the opportunity to learn and grow. Mm. Um, during my time, I've worked in six different accounts before I moved into the person office. And I've held almost in every role that you can possibly hold. I started out as an agent on the phones and I took the opportunities to move up in the company. I've been a team lead, a supervisor, a reporting analyst. I've been a person office journalist. I was lucky enough to be Mike Jossie's assistant for a little while. And then I finally landed in the benefits department. The benefits department, I love what I do here because I get a chance to help people. And that's big on who I am. And I know that's big on who Qualphone is too. And so it gives me the opportunity to help people and it just makes me feel fulfilled every day. And while I've been here, I've definitely had the chance to learn many things and try out different positions until I landed in where I'm supposed to be. And that's the benefits department. That's great. And I love the way you say that, landed where you're supposed to be. And that's kind of been a common theme and a common theme at Qualphone, this idea of total vocation and helping folks do or get to a place where they feel like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. Since you started here, uh, again, starting with, with what was a different company and then acquired, how has the company evolved? How have you seen things change over that 20 years? Oh, some big changes during those 20 years. The company that we worked for before started out amazing. And then as time went on, things weren't getting, I wasn't as happy as I was when I first started. And then I learned that we were going to get acquired by Qualphone. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. Um, I don't know. I don't care who you are, but that is scary to know that your company is getting acquired. I can remember sitting in with the leadership team and we started learning about Qualphone and who they were as a company and the things they did to help the employees. And I thought, well, maybe this is a good company. Maybe I shouldn't be scared. Maybe I should be grateful. As time went on, um, I realized, you know, this is a good company. Things started to, to get better. I realized that Qualphone truly cares about their employees. They care about your life and what you do and they do want you to succeed. The longer I've worked here, the stronger I've seen Qualphone become 
and the stronger I've seen other me myself included, but other employees become stronger too. One thing, one way that I've definitely seen them evolve is with the different geographics. When I, when Qualcomm first took over, the different geographics were kind of working on their own. Mm-hmm. But I've definitely seen them start to work together more and more and more. And we're now one great big team. We are all working together as that team. And I think that has also made Qualphone stronger, relying on each region's strengths and balancing out those weaknesses. So Katie, you're in Idaho Falls. Correct. I love the story how you started as an agent. We've had a few. I started as an agent. Um, did Jana Kino start out as an agent? Jen, yes, Jeremy, yes, Jan did. Angel, yep. Sada. I mean, we have a lot. It's. It, I love when people come on and share that because I. I hope there's an agent out there listening to this and it's like, oh, can just even envision a different future for themselves that they didn't know existed the day before. And I think this um, company and this industry you know, allows for that. So I, I love that. And I love how, you, you know, like Jeremy said, you use the phrase landed where you're supposed to be because that's kind of how it feels. Like you, <laughs> if you work hard, you take advantage of every opportunity provided and you stay focused. If you apply for a job and you don't get it, <laughs> if you stay focused and you stay patient, I just think it's a it's a wonderful career opportunity for for people who may not know at a given age what they want to do with their lives because um, sometimes <laughs> you don't. Oh, that's how I was when I started. I didn't know what I wanted to do. People would ask me when I was younger, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" I mean, when I started here, I was an adult and I still didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. I still feel that way. I still have palpitations when we discuss total vacation. <laughs> like. <I'm- laughs> Uh, so let me follow up with the a question about the mission. In your career, how have you seen the mission grow? I've never worked for a company that had a mission department, and I'm always fascinated to hear the, the behind the scenes of how that all came to be. Like when you were introduced to this idea, the concept of the mission, like what was that like for you? Qualphone's the first company I worked for that had a mission like what we do also. I was like, that's not going to work. That's not going to help us out. And when Qualphone first took over, they wanted to do the fun at work activities and the activities where we help in the community. They asked us to do it once a month. When they first took over, we would do it once a quarter. You know, if there was a special holiday, we would do a fun at work activity and have a potluck or do something like that. And then Lyman Beatty challenged us to do it once a month. And we started doing the fun at work activities once a month. And I noticed that that made us stronger. It gave us a chance to get away from work, get to know each other. Those times made us stronger as a team. Um, We knew that we could rely on each other. We knew, you know, if somebody was going through a hard time, they felt like they could come to us and talk to us and we could support them. The helping in the community, seeing the difference we were making in people's lives. I can remember one time we did a school supply drive for four or five different local schools. And when we went and dropped those supplies off, just hearing from those teachers and those principals how much those supplies were going to help their students in need. It has a huge impact on you. Just knowing that we came together as a company and we're making such a big difference in these people's lives. To me, that was just amazing. And the longer I worked here, the more and more I I learned about Qualphone's mission. They do truly want to make people's lives better, not just us as employees, but people in our communities and people that we affect. They want everybody that we touch in our lives, they want us to make their lives better. They don't just say, we want to make your lives better. Do it. They give us the tools and they give us what we need to be able to make that happen. It just amazes me how great of a company Qualphone is. I love Qualphone. I believe in their mission 100%. And 
I know working here has made my life so much better. I don't know where I would be today if Qualphone hadn't bought out the other company that I worked for. I, it, it's just amazing what Qualphone has done for me personally, and I am grateful every day that I that I work here. Katie, you're so passionate. I, I love your answers. I'm so grateful for you coming on the podcast and sharing your story. This is a question we often ask. If you could give advice to a new hire joining our company or organization today, what would it be? Um, that's a good question. I would let them know, don't settle for just being in the position that you start in. If you want to move up in the company, set your sights on that position that you want. Take every opportunity you can to learn something new. If somebody asks you if you can help with something or they put are putting feelers out there and saying, you know, we might need help with this project. If that's something that interests you, jump on it and offer to help. When I started here, that's what I did. I, I took every opportunity I could to learn and to grow. And if they were asking for help with something, I took that opportunity to help. It helped me learn and it helped me grow as a person. And I fully believe that if you want to move up with Qualphone, you definitely have the opportunity to, to move up in the company. Just take every chance you can get to learn something new, to grow um, as a person and grow in your position, that will definitely make a difference in your life and give you the chances to be able to move up in the company. So Katie, over these, these 20 years, you've seen a lot, you've done a lot within the organization. What would you want potential clients to know about our company? Um, I would want them to know that Qualphone is an amazing company to work for. They care. They care about their employees, the communities that we are in, and their clients. Because Qualphone supports our employees so well, it allows our employees to support the clients the way that they need to be supported. As Qualphone employees, we pride ourselves in doing the best job that we can every day, and we're grateful to do those jobs. We will do the best job that we can for you. Katie, I have, I don't even know what episode number this is, but whatever episode number this is, you know, we have done a podcast basically exalting the the wonders of working for, for Qualphone. Reality in life is, you know, there's light and there's shadow. So not every day is perfect. Not anyone is perfect. Not any company is perfect. So there are times where you might not get the job or, or, uh, you have a bad day or you're not on the team that you want to be on or, or a infinite number of reasons to be disappointed. What kind of advice do you give to, to an employee to just kind of be like, you know, there are going to be times that aren't great, but stick with it or, or whatever you have to say about it. You know, there have been many positions that I've applied for and not gotten. There have been many times that I've been disappointed in a score I've received or feedback I've received. You know, there's many, many times that I've been disappointed at work. I try to stay positive. Yes, they get me down. Yes, I have my moments where... I'm upset or I'm disappointed, but I don't let them control my life. I learn from those mistakes. You know, if I didn't get a position, I would ask for feedback after my interview and I would take that feedback and I would grow for that. If, if it was a skill I was lacking, I would try to sharpen that skill. So if that position came along again, I would be better prepared for it. Just try to stay positive. And I know things happen where it's hard to stay positive and you're going to be upset for a little while. That's totally okay. Feel your feelings, but then put those feelings behind you and move forward. You've got to stay strong. You've got to try to do what you can to move forward and grow. And if you let those disappointments control your life, you're not going to have the chance to move up in the company. 
And I think that's one reason I've had that opportunity to move up and to find what the position that I love is because I kept that positive attitude. I learned from my mistakes. I learned from my disappointments. And that has just helped me grow. If everything was perfect, I don't think I'd feel the joy that I feel because I didn't I didn't experience those disappointments in my life. Um, I think you have to have disappointments to be able to feel true joy and true happiness. Fantastic. That was a fantastic answer. And I couldn't agree with you more. Katie, as we've done this interview, we've had several folks that have shared with us. They started this job with the idea of, of just doing it long enough until something better came along. And here you are 20 years down the road. What was it that made you decide, hey, I'm going to stick around here. This is not just a, a temporary stop for me. I'm going to stay here at this company. What made you make that decision? I don't know if I ever consciously made that decision. A little bit about how I came to work at Qualphone. And that'll kind of help here, I think. At my previous job I had, um, my dad called me, said, hey, I'm filling out this application. It's asking questions I don't know. And it was computer related questions. I helped him with it. I had a gal that I current I, that I worked with at that time come to me the same questions. I had a friend call me and ask me. I had multiple people call and ask, um, say, hey, I'm filling out this application. I finally decided, you know, this is a sign that maybe I need to apply at this company because everybody's coming to me asking me to help them with their applications. So I finally applied and I got the position and I started working here. And you know, I was like, well, maybe I'll work here until I find something better, like what you're talking about, Jeremy. I started working here and I absolutely loved the first account that I worked in. It was dial up internet tech support. Mm. I absolutely loved doing that. And so I just stayed working. Well, that account closed, another one opened, and I moved into that one. And I thought, okay, this is fun. I'm learning something new. You know, it was with cell phones. I'm learning something new. This is this is a lot of fun. And as I moved from department to, de to department, it just all was just clicking with me. And so I don't think I ever consciously made that decision that I wanted to stay here. I think it's just I loved what I did and I loved the people that I worked with that I never wanted to look for something else. I never wanted to, you know, go anywhere else because I was loving what I did. And then once Qualphone took over and I noticed how much they, I think that might be it. When Qualphone took over and I noticed how much they care about their employees, how much they do to help their employees, that I, I decided, you know, this is home. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to work here, but I don't want to leave. And it's so rare that you find a company that cares about their employees like Qualphone does. Qualphone's values match my own personal values so well that I think to myself, why would I want to go anywhere else? I'm never going to find a company that believes the same things that I believe and encourages their employees to live their lives like like I want to live my life. Well, Katie, again, thank you for coming on and thank you for being the onboarding person for me. That was awesome. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad I had the opportunity. I have actually more thank yous for you. And thank you <laughs> for, be, for being um, part of the benefits team because I actually checked my 401k this morning and... Thank you. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> to you for, for many reasons. You have worked here for 20 years. What are your, you know, your last words to, to anyone listening to this podcast? I have had amazing mentors, amazing supervisors throughout the years. They've all had an impact in my life and I'm grateful for them. But I think the person that has had the biggest impact in my life is Mike Jossie. I also got to help onboard Mike Jossie. His didn't go nearly as smooth as yours did, Marisol. 
but I had the opportunity to onboard him. And then I had the opportunity to be his assistant Mm. for nine months to a year, somewhere right around there. And during that time, he taught me so much. You know, he it would encourage me all the time. He He's actually the reason that I'm in the benefits department. I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity to work with Mike and learn from him and that he was so willing to let go of me and let me go to the department I was meant to go to. Mm. I see the changes that Mike has made in the person office. I believe those changes have just made us stronger as a company. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to learn from him and to be taught by him. Um, He's an amazing person, and I'm grateful that he's here at Qualfo. Well, Katie, it has been a pleasure having you on the podcast. We appreciate everything you do. We appreciate your willingness to, to come on the podcast. And we had a great time talking to you. So thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I was really nervous to do it, but I'm grateful I had the chance. And I hope the things that I say help somebody out there and that it helps them get into the position that they want to go. And, you know, they end up staying with Qualphone for 20 years like I have because it's been an amazing journey. And I'm grateful every day for the job that I have and the people I get to work with. That's great. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Thank you. That was a great interview. You couldn't tell, but Katie was really nervous before we did this. And I think she did a fantastic job. So I'm, I'm so grateful. You know, she mentioned something, Jeremy, that I, you know, as much as many of these episodes as we, we have done that I don't think we really even scratch the service is service. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't really like done podcast about all the things that we do from that service perspective that just uh, it adds to our experience here working at Qualfund. So I think we need to look into that. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what I really like about this idea of service is we think of service helping other people, which clearly it is, right? That's what service is. But Katie even touches on this and it's, it's what service does to us when we mm-hmm. perform service. It's what it does for us. And she kind of talked about that, mentioned that several times, how how much it helped her grow and how much it meant to her that she was making a difference. And and I think that's the thing about service is it's it's a two way thing, right? It's the people getting the service they benefit. But I think the people giving the service possibly benefit even more. Yeah, I just love that. It's just another filter that we get to experience at at Qualphone. I mean, yeah. there's so many opportunities within our sites and our locations and just the any anyone on the E team or our chief level team, you know, you bring up an idea about service. Um, they they always listen with an open heart. It's in our culture, it's in our DNA, yeah. as Mr. Abel Cruz is often <laughs> quoted as as saying. Yeah, and he's absolutely right. And if you haven't heard our episode with Abel Cruz, I highly suggest you listen to it because it's a really, a really great one as well. All of them. I'm proud of all our episodes. Yeah. And, you know, as I look back at the the different people we've talked to, you know, from different walks of life, different countries, they're in different roles. There is unifying themes throughout. And that's one of the fun things to do is go back and listen to some of these that we did from last season and then just kind of compare them to the most recent episode, for example. And and you hear those common threads through all of those. And that's neat to hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting excited because we're almost finishing up season two. We have, you know, less than 10 episodes, I think, left in, in this season. And we haven't even scratched the surface. No. <laughs> no. Like, there's just so much more we can say about Qualphone and the mission. So I'm excited for it. Me too. Well, thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really does help with our algorithm. And and thank you. We have a ton of new listeners. The way they define an audience member, I think, has to do with the number. Like, basically, if you binge the season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or, or binge the show. And we've just had a huge jump in, I'd say, the last, like, five weeks. And, and so thank you to everyone who's listening and has joined us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Marisol. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Mission Qualphone. 
Remember, you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Mission Qualphone.